Aouzu bali minay shaitan nirujim. Bismi ala rahman arahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin rahman arahim. Malaki yawmatin ya khana abudu wa ya khana astaim. Edna sa sorta ala mustaqim sorta ala dina nabta alayhim. Qayru makhdubi alayhim ala dalim. Amen. Greetings my brothers and sisters. My name and title is Imam Mahdi. And I am campaigning for the 2020 presidency of the United States of America. And my campaign slogan is, 2020 USA Presidential Holy War Struggle Soul Salvation Campaign. And today's episode is titled as Political Political. Therefore, we must understand that political means control. That's what politics means, control. It makes no difference what you do in the United States of America. Everything controlled by the politicians. They amend laws, they abolish laws, and they make laws, establish laws man-made laws to govern your life. In other words, you are guided and controlled by false ideas and distractions in the United States of America at the whim of the decision of man. Not God, but man. That's what makes Imam Mahdi political party and that he represent as the Islam Political Nation Agency, the most important po politics in the United States of America and the world. However, in the United States, we say this is democracy. I am coming as an authoritarian. With that being said, before I go deeper into more details about the political political, I want to highlight a few situations that's going on in our society. As I have recently said in previous production, the minorities are being uh, killed by legal authorities in the United States of America, black minorities. And uh, the thing with Imam Mahdi is that when you have someone that threatens your life, you have the right to protect your life. If a police officer threatens your life, you have the right to stop that threat. Even if it means killing that police officer or officers who are all there. But black people must understand your leaders teach you to fear those who oppress you. And it's not just police officers, whether it's military or anybody who threaten your life, you have the right to stop that threat. That's why you have the right to bear arms. And the right to bear arms says this, this the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, of the United States Constitution, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It's your right, people, public. Now you understand why police officers ride around in the black community. Why? To make the black youth felons. So if you're a felon, you can't bear arms in the United States of America. So they're going to ride around in your community looking for a reason to make you a felon. So that you cannot bear arms. But that's your right. 
You understand? But when you bear arms, you have a, a weapon in your home or in your possession or in your car, and you may have children. And if a child grab or play with your weapon and they accidentally kill themselves or hurt themselves, you will be prosecuted for that. So, I'm a firearm instructor. Imam Mahdi is a firearm instructor in the state of South Carolina. So if you're going to carry a firearm, always take the clip out. Pull it back. You understand? Check for bullets. Make sure no bullets are in your weapon. You understand? Because you don't want to hurt your child. And in the state of South Carolina, it's concealed weapon. Nobody knows you have a weapon on you. It's concealed weapon. So, if you run into a situation where you deal with more than one person, like a gang, or you got to deal with more than one person who's threatening your life, I teach people, I deal with mainly three types of bullets. I deal with the, uh, when you're dealing with the shotgun, you have the bird shot. The bird shot has a lot of BBs in it. You understand? You deal with bird shot. You deal with bird shot and a shotgun. You gonna have about you gonna have about five in the chamber. So bird shot, you can hit ten people. Boom, boom. Just with two shots. Cause it's gonna spread. You understand? And then I will put in buckshot, cause buckshot has five bullets in one of these. Whereas birdshot may have maybe 200 BBs in one or more or less. And uh, with the buckshot, if somebody's still moving, you still got five rounds going in that individual. Uh, how many of that may be there? But then you have a slug, which is only one bullet in one of these. It's like having a nine millimeter. It's like having a nine a nine millimeter. See nine millimeter. You may have nineteen. You may have nineteen bullets in this right here. This right here carry 16 rounds. And this is 9 millimeter. 9 millimeter. You have to know how to shoot. You understand? When you pull a gun on someone, that's your intentions to shoot that person. And that person has the right to fire back at you. So you be careful when you pull a gun out on somebody. That's their ticket to blow your head off also. So when you get ready to pull your gun, you make sure you use it. Whether you're using it on someone in the street who's trying to threaten your life or cause harm to your life. Whether it's a police officer you using your gun on because he's bringing threat to your life. Because he already have a gun. So that's coercion right there. You understand? So if he gonna send, he gonna make your family fatherless, make sure you make his family fatherless. So, I just wanted to bring that to attention. Let you know 
you have the right to stop or to prevent someone that threatens your life. And Allah has revealed this in the Quran. And that's why my presidency is so important. My president is so important to the United States of America. And I'm just one man bringing this message to you. Yet the most powerful man in the United States of America and the world. Because I am a messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. In this day and time. The Imam Mahdi. The Imam Mahdi that goes in, in and out of paradise. The Imam Mahdi that goes in, in and out of hell. The Imam Mahdi that came from paradise. This who I be. So my presidency, my presidency brings about the solution for the United States of America and the world. And let me help you understand the politics that I'm bringing. It is the sword or sword, tomato, tomato, of, of Islam. Allah, la illa illa huwa ahayu ahayu mo. That's the sword of Islam. That's the sword of the kingdom of Islam. This is Allah's kingdom. The heavens and earth. Everything belongs to Allah. You fools are just on earth being disrespectful and ungrateful to the creator who created you. You're oppressing people. You put diseases in people's bodies. You feeding them filth. You have them addicted to drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, and all other kind of smokes and barbiturates and pills. Hallucinogens, you're destroying yourselves. It's called perdition. You're charging tax, interest on the dollar, tax is okay in Islam, but interest is not. That's why it's called la riba. No interest on the dollar. So this is where we are. How shall I run my presidency? Authoritarian. Authoritarian is the characterized by excessive show or use of authority. Allah has revealed in Al Quran. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those whom He have placed in authority. This is Quran. So only Allah law is to govern the land. The United States Constitution, there's a lot in it that is in accordance with the Holy Quran. However, my presidency shall abolish those articles or amendments that is not in accordance with the Quran. And I will be starting with the 13th and 14th Amendment. And we know what the 13th and 14th Amendment says. Let me get that for you here. The 13th and 14th Amendment. I done dealt with this quite a few times before. And the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, Section 4, says the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debt incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion shall not be questioned. They're telling you not to question the government. And when you don't question 
anybody who say they have the truth, this is a curse from Allah upon you. Now Allah cursed those who refuse to come out of prison. So uh, all the experience that the so-called black people in the United States going through, Allah cursed these black folks because they refuse to come out of oppression. And I'm going to deal with the details on why and how they refuse to come out of oppression. To continue with this section 4 of the United States Constitution of the 14th Amendment, but neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave, but all such debt, obligation, and claim shall be held illegal and void. And we know what emancipation means. It means to set free. And they said all such debt, obligation, and claim shall be held illegal and void. So they said emancipation shall be held illegal and void. So-called black people. They said they're not going to set you free. But it's not up to them. It's not up to the United States. The United States uh, Supreme Court. None of them. The legislation. The executive branch. They don't make a difference. You know. It don't make a difference. It's not your choice no more. You are in destruction by Allah. And I'm helping you to understand this. That's why the COVID-19 is here. You notice your President Donald John Trump, President Donald Don, John, President Donald John Trump, when he first got started, he been pumping around the media what he's going to do to China. What he's going to do to China, China don't comply to this or they don't comply to that. How they going to Stop giving money to this person and that person. That's how, that's, this, this is the behavior of a devil. And this has been the behavior of America since its beginning. Now that China has dropped the biological COVID-19 coronavirus, COVID-19 on the United States, biological warfare, do you hear your president talking about what he's going to do to China now? You don't hear him saying anything about what he's going to do to China. He's trying to quietly get out the seat. Hold your president accountable for this biological warfare that has been dropped on you. I promise you, this biological warfare that you're experiencing now is nothing compared to what's coming. Allah has shown me that. And I'm hoping and I'm trying to prevent it by becoming president. I'm trying to prevent it. He has shown me. Because when Allah shows me things, I have a Either I work to prevent it, or he's giving me the message to give you, let me inform you of what's about to happen to you. So whatever the situation is, I'm just following Allah's command. But he has shown me that there's a white powder coming, a chemical that's going to cause your skin to bubble. You probably won't have but two days to live. You understand? So my people, you can't be following Barack Hussein Obama. Because he studied constitutional law. He was a constitutional lawyer. And he did not even free his own wife. But now his wife is standing up trying to uh, promote Joe. I'm going to say Mr. Biden. He trying to, she trying to promote Mr. Biden to uh, become president. Who was vice president upon the Barack Hussein Obama. You understand? So Joe... Mr. Biden is a criminal for not freeing the so-called black Africans of the United States of America as an accomplice, an aid in a battle. And she speaks about how he lost members of his family. He is, uh, what do you call it, empathetic to, uh, uh, to the people's feelings. No, no, he's apathetic. He don't care about the people's feelings. Just as you, Miss Michelle Obama. The black folks are tired of these black people misguiding them. Barack, the Obama family must understand this. The black people, the so-called black Africans of America, we are tired of you sellout niggas. We don't want to see no Obamas. 